Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com and to the first day of my Latte Panda Alpha week. Yes, for the next seven days I'm going to be using the Latte Panda Alpha single board computer as my only computer and this will provide a great opportunity to really test it out to see all the things it can do and for example I'll be doing all the editing and compositing for this video on the Latte Panda Alpha. So let's go and get started. So, here we have the Latte Panda Alpha single board computer from a DF robot that I'm going to be using for the next week. And I covered the specs of this in detail in my first Latte Panda Alpha video, but just to give you the headlines, this is based on a dual-core 7th generation Intel mobile processor, a Core M37Y30, which clocks at up to 2.6 GHz. And specifically, this is Latte Panda Alpha 864, which means it's got 8 gigabytes of RAM and 64 gigabytes of onboard flash storage. And on that onboard flash storage, I've got installed Windows 10. Now, I've also got some other storage on the board for this week as well. If we turn it over, this has got a M.2 connectivity, and it's therefore got a 500 gigabyte NVMe SSD, a WD Black SSD installed as well, which will give me a lot of flexibility. So uh, let's get this thing uh, turned back again the right way round. Let's uh, get the thing all connected up. There we are, and we'll now go and look at the desktop and see my configuration. And uh, as you can see, I'm just running a Windows 10, nothing unusual like that, runs very well on the Latte Panda Alpha. And if I open up this PC, you'll see we've got the eMMC flash there, which has got Windows installed on it. If I do properties, you'll see there's about 34 gig free with the Windows and various other software installed. And then below that, you can see the NVMe SSD. And you might be surprised to see that's only got 346 gigabyte capacity. So you're probably thinking, where's the rest of the storage gone from that 500 gigabyte drive? And the answer is, I've got another partition on, on this drive, which has got Linux Mint installed. I've got this set up as a dual boot system. So uh, let's uh, show you that. Let's go and uh, do a restart. And if we restart, I've got it set up so I have to press F7 to go into the boot menu, which I'll do now, and uh, we'll get to a boot menu on the Latte Panda Alpha. All those little panda eyes look, and uh, there's our boot menu. And it's set up so it'll go straight into Windows by default, because uh, I've got the boot loader, which has got Grub to go into a dual boot on the NVMe SSD. So if I select that, select that there, and it'll now allow us to go into a Linux Mint. We could have gone back into Windows there as well if we wanted to, but wouldn't be a great little point going through all that process. And hopefully, as you can now see, it's going to boot into a Linux Mint. What is my password? I do so many configurations, I can't remember what passwords I give them. But there we are. Should now be in Linux Mint. And uh, as you can see, we are. And if I just go to uh, uh, where we are, accessories and disks, you will see how things are set up. There is the uh, WD uh, MBME SSD. There's the uh, partition which I'm sharing with Windows, NTFS formatted. There's the one with an expint on it, which is not NTFS formatted. And what it thinks is the SD card reader is actually the uh, internal eMMC flash storage. Now, I thought I'd also just show you that whilst I've got this set to boot directly into Windows, and when I press F7 for a boot menu to go into Linux, you can ch change that as well if you wish to. So I'll just uh, do a, another restart because uh, why not? You're seeing everything booting up here. I'll press F7 again when all that stuff is finished. There we are. And uh, hopefully we'll get back to our uh, little uh, booty menu. And I've gone back to there because I can easily get to setup. Just get into the BIOS on the Latte Panda, which is a nice non-pretentious BIOS. It's not one of those big graphical BIOSes. You just get some of the things you need to do. And you'll see here for booting, it's set for the first boot option is the Windows Boot Manager, which is on the eMMC flash storage. And the second option, which is the one we picked up by going into the boot menu, is to go to a, pick up the one on the NVMe drive that we can boot into Ubuntu. But of course, you could change those. The reason I haven't got the uh, Grub running by default is because it would take me by default into Linux Mint. I rather want to default into Windows, and this was the quickest way to get it all set up. Anyway, I will now just escape out of this quick without saving yes, because... I need to get on and do some traditional normal computing stuff. You're now seeing the Windows boot on the Latte Panda Alpha. You've seen all the possible boot um, opportunities we've got with this setup coming up. 
I must say it's really nice to have things set up to have a, a silent PC or an almost silent PC, depending on if the fan comes on or not, which is running both Windows and Linux. It's a very nice configuration. I'm really looking forward to using this across this week. Anyway, I now just need to go to uh, uh, Google and I'll go to uh, YouTube and Google Docs. All those things I need to work in and I'll talk to you again tomorrow. Greetings. I'm now back again. It's now a Tuesday. Latte Panda Alpha tells me it's Tuesday. And as you can see, I've been messing around in a GIMP, creating a new desktop background. You'd think I had better things to do, wouldn't you? But it makes it look nicer on the desktop to have our Latte Panda Alpha there. And I've also connected in the SSD from my Atomos recorder, which I recorded onto yesterday, so I could do some compositing work. And I've been doing that in Fusion. So if I launch Fusion, Fusion is a compositing package, a visual effects package from Blackmagic Design, the same people who make DaVinci Resolve. And uh, it normally looks more like this, but uh, so that you can actually uh, see things more easily on the screen, I made it look like this. And in fact, I'll even take off uh, the status bar to give us a bit more space there as well. And if I load in my uh, project I've been working on, which is down uh, here, I'll load that in. Uh, what we've basically got here is what's called a, a flow tab. There's also a timeline tab down there as well to work on these uh, bits of a video. But basically, everything here is what's called a node. So one of these here either loads in some footage or does something to it or exports it out again. And we've also got some monitors and some tool space. So for example, if I select this uh, node here, you'll see it's got some tools will come up. And uh, if I press the one key, I can send the output to that monitor there. Or I can press the two key and send it to that monitor over there. I could have it either monitor if, if I wish to. Let's turn one of those off again. Let's turn them both off. And then down here, I've got uh, another thing I've loaded in. This is a background. That's the uh, standard explaining computers background. I'm sure you recognize that. And what I've done with uh, this footage here is I've added something called Primat, which basically is a, is a matte uh, thing which will extract the background. So if I put it up there, there you are, the background's come out. And then I've added a little bit of brightness and sharpening to that. And I've merged it, if I press that key there, with the uh, traditional explaining computers background. So it's looking more like an introduction to explaining computers. And then I've also got here an element there. If I just bring that one up over here, this is our standard thing that comes up at the start and does the uh, little um, captiony thing. That's also got a bit of animation on it. And finally, that is com combined with the final shot. If I press two there. There you are. You can see that's how the shot is put together. And if I press the F4 up here, I can show you a bit bigger. Things are coming together for uh, the, the shot to open this very video. So uh, there we are. I can't really explain how everything works in Fusion in this one particular video, but I would note Fusion is free to download from the Blackmagic Design website. I'll maybe make a video about it in the future. But uh, anyway, for now, I'll just press, I think, Render. This is all set up, raring to go. So I can press Render. It's all set up. I could just press uh, Start Render. And uh, I love the way that in Fusion, all the little nodes flicker, all these little things flicker on and off as, the, as they're working, putting the shot together. That'll clearly take it a second or two to put together, so I will uh, let that get on with it, and I'll talk to you again tomorrow. So, here I am back again. It's now Wednesday, and I'm continuing to stress out the Latte Panda Alpha doing things you wouldn't normally do on a, a single board computer. And today that's been video editing. I've been running a DaVinci Resolve. So let's run it up. It'll take a second to run up. And you'll see I'm running version of 12.5 here. And the most recent version of DaVinci Resolve is actually version 15. But I found if you run version 15 or indeed version 14, then they are a little bit unstable on Latte Panda Alpha. And that's not unreasonable given that Latte Panda Alpha doesn't actually meet the minimum system requirements for DaVinci Resolve. But actually I've had version 12.5 running very, very well over the past few days. So I'll show you what I've been doing. I've basically got a, a ProRes edit and a final edit. My ProRes edit basically takes the footage I shoot off the camera or a grab to the recorder. So you'll see here, I've basically got, say here's a Monday segment, here's Tuesday segment. These segments are being color corrected as needed from the original Apple ProRes files. These are very high data rate files, a bit of color correction going on over there. And then these are delivered out as a particular segment. So that would be say, Monday segment would be over uh, there to uh, there. And then when that is chucked out as a, as a file I'm going to be using in the file edit, I've gone to the file edit. Let's do that, which is over here. Of course, we'll have to save that. 
And uh, this is this week's video, being edited in DaVinci Resolve. It's very confusing having uh, this week's video being edited in the video itself, if you see what I mean. But uh, if you play it through, you'll see, look. Uh, yes, we're actually uh, got playing there. Uh, the video and it'll get to this week's title and there it is look and um welcome to another me video. talking to Explain me in the video all about stuff and i've just been uh, putting in all the little uh, things we're used to seeing little uh, uh yellow labely things coming up and that type of stuff and it's all all working very well indeed i really am very impressed with how things are working in uh DaVinci Resolve here on the latte panda alpha if i flick it up to full screen if i do control f It'll take a little second, but it'll it'll get there, and it's still working perfectly well, which is really, I think, very impressive. There's no problems at all playing back this footage at all on this machine. Now let's go back to uh, normal stuff and uh, turn me off. It's very strange having me talking to me talking to you. And uh, there we are. This is what this is what we're doing yesterday. This is a uh, yesterday. No, it wasn't. Yes, it was. That's right. Yesterday. It's confusing, isn't it? Because yesterday we were working on that bit of the video, which is the introduction with all the compositing, but we were doing it over here in um, Fusion, weren't we? And which this is a segment all about Fusion, which you might remember from yesterday. So there we are. Uh, everything is working very nicely. I've been stressing out to, uh, the Latte Panda out for the DaVinci Resolve, and it works. It is perfectly possible to edit a video using high data rate files on a Latte Panda Alpha, and that is amazing. And that suggests this board's got you know, really good performance. And therefore, tomorrow, which will be, I think, Thursday, if I've got my date right, I'm going to be running some more broad performance tests on the Latte Panda Alpha. Well, here I am back again. It's now Thursday. I've spent lots of today working in the Linux Mint here, doing things on the web, for example, checking up on the news learning that those of us who thought that AMD couldn't possibly be launching new chips in, within a few days of CES were right. Supply chains don't work like that. They're launching in the middle of a 2019. And uh, I've also been doing a lot of work in uh, Impress, in uh, LibreOffice, working on some new lecture material because University of Nottingham has invited me back to do some more lectures. So I've been working on those. But I thought this evening we'd have a look at uh, the performance of the Latte Panda Alpha. And uh, I, for example, got an eight top running there. I know some of you like to see that. I do find it amazing that the doesn't take that much memory. Look, only about 700 megabytes being used as the thing is sitting here running on, on the desktop. And I've also here got uh, a terminal open where I can run a uh, GL Mark II, which is a little uh, graphics testing routine for uh, uh, Linux. Not many testing routines available for Linux least easy ones to use. So I'll put that one over there. And uh, there we have a nice horse going round doing a look at that ridiculous frame rate, 1796. Uh, I think I'll let this thing uh, run through a bit to something more interesting. And uh, that's what I pulled something a bit more interesting. It's uh, whizzing around a textured box. And again, that looks uh, pretty good, doesn't it? Again, massive frame rate. Let's let, let this thing uh, complete. And there we are, lots of fascinating images have flown past very quickly, and we've got a GL Mark II score of a 1320. I've no idea, to be honest, if that's good, bad, or uh, indifferent, but certainly the, uh, nothing here seemed to really stress out with Latte Panda Alpha. We've got some very good uh, frame rates coming up there. So what I think we'll now do is we'll flick across into Windows, and by the magic of dual booting, here we are. And as you can see, in Windows I've installed and have been running pass mark to give us another level of a performance indication where we've got a pass mark score of what a 1898 uh, which is uh, not too bad is it I mean for a single board computer it's pretty good I mean clearly compared to the world average it, it's less which is what 2597 but uh, for a single board computer I think Mulatto Panda Alpha is performing here very well um, you can spend a lot of time comparing pass mark scores I won't do in this video because this already is a very long video but just to give you one comparison um, the Passmark score for my i7-6700T using onboard graphics is a 3932. So this is doing about half as well as an i7, um, a fairly recent i7 using onboard graphics. I just thought I'd show you a couple of the tests here because they're quite nice to look at. Let's look at the, some of the graphics tests because those, those are the ones people always want to see. Let's just run DirectX 9. I think that's the planes test as I call it. 
and uh, the planes run reasonably well. They do a frame rate, uh, what, about 46 frames a second it was there. They, they tend to bound between about 40 and uh, 30 frames a second. So this is not too bad, the, the planes test. So let's uh, let that one uh, complete off. Let's just speed through to the end of this. And uh, the other test I just wanted to run, just to show you the limitations of we can't do everything on Latte Panda Alpha, is the DirectX 12 test. Let's just rerun that one. This is, I, I call it the, the spaceships test. I don't know what it's properly called, but I call it the spaceships test. Oh, looks exciting, isn't it? And uh, this wants to run at 4K, which it can't do here, but it's achieving about 10 frames a second, which I don't think is too bad. Um, I remember when I ran this on the uh, GTA uh, 1030, I put it to a PC a little while ago, it did about 30 frames a second on, on a 1030. So this is doing about a third of that on the onboard graphics on a single board computer. I think this is pretty good. You know, you probably wouldn't want to try and save the world with graphics quite like that, but actually that's not that bad a test, isn't it? So there we are. This has given us a little bit of an indication of the performance of the Latte Panda Alpha. So, here I am back again, it's now Friday, and I thought we'd have a look at the power use and the temperatures of the Latte Panda Alpha. And I thought to start off, I'd just remind you about the processor inside the machine, which is the Intel Corp M37Y30. Uh, this is the spec page, as you can see here. To remind you, a processor which has got a base frequency 1 GHz, going up to 2.6 GHz, and a thermal design power of only 4.5 watts. Very, very low, because this is a mobile processor. So let's uh, close that down and you'll see here I've got running real temp to show us the, the temperature. Here you can see the temperature of the two uh, processor cores, about what 57-ish degrees and uh, minimum, this was Jeff after the thing and booted up, got into Windows, I run this up, what 27, 28 and um, it's basically sitting here idling along. There's a few things running, uh, DaVinci Resolve is running, not least in the background, I'll show you in a second, but basically not doing very much and it's on a it keeps rising up 57, 58, something like that. It does get fairly warm, the Latte Panda Alpha. This said, the fan isn't currently running. And I've also got connected in a power meter, which is plugged in uh, between the socket and the adapter. So this is showing total power use, including losses in the power adapter as well. And as you can see, we're using between about six and seven watts at the moment, which really is very impressive to be sitting here idling along on a desktop PC effectively using six or seven watts of power. But of course, these things will change because if we go into uh, DaVinci Resolve there, what I'm going to do is to start uh, rendering. Uh, we're going to render out, this is actually yesterday's section of ProRes which is being rendered out. And that of course will start to hit power use. We're up to about, what, uh, 19 watts there, which is uh, maxing the thing out, which is clearly all 20 watts and 19, 20 watts. And can I bring up uh, in the foreground that, and as you can see our temperatures now, um, into the 70s, the fan is now going round as you would, uh, you would hope at that sort of temperature. So clearly things are progressing along. So I'll uh, just let this run through a bit. We'll see what happens over time with the temperatures. And uh, it seems to me as that thing has gone through that the fan coming in has clearly had a significant difference. We're now back down into the, the mid 60s again. The fan is going at a, its full pelt, which is not very noisy. It's a nice quiet little fan. And I can certainly feel some hot air coming out the end of the Latte Panda's little vents there as this thing is going along. Let's just let it finish off a bit more. And uh, I think this is now clearly pretty stable. Um, it suggests to me, because the power use has dropped to a 15 watts from 20, that maybe this thing has throttled. We don't know, but that's, that's certainly a, a possibility, isn't it? It's dropped back its uh, speed. But uh, we seem to have pretty sort of solid temperatures there in sort of the mid-ish 60s. So uh, there we are. That gives you an indication of uh, power use and the temperatures for the Latte Panda Alpha. Greetings. It's now Saturday and I thought we'd have a little hardware segment today. I thought I'd show you how my uh, configuration on the Latte Panda Alpha has changed a little bit across the week. And this is because the Latte Panda Alpha does have three USB 3 ports, all, all very nice, but once you've plugged in a keyboard and a mouse, if they're separate devices, as I've been using, you've only got one port free. And if you want to plug in, say, two forms of external storage, that's a bit uh, constraining. And if you want to plug in, say, devices like this, which is designed to clearly block uh, two ports, and also you're, you're a bit uh, 
constraint as well. So fortunately, on the latter Panda Alpha, on this GPIO connector, there is a header for an additional USB 2 port. And as you can see, using parts I had lying around my bits box, I've added in an extra USB 2 port. This is a very old USB 2 bracket, comes around here and plugs into these pins here on the GPIO connector. If I give you a shot there, you can see you've got the four USB 2 pins there. And basically it's connected through using one of these, which is actually a part of a, a Raspberry Pi GPIO connector I had in my bits box. And I've had to take it through an additional set of wires because I've had to uh, reverse the polarity of the data leads to make sure it's connected the right way around. But that works very well. So now I've got my uh, keyboard plugged in through this USB 2 port, mouse over here, and two free USB 3 ports. Now, I was going to try also to do an addition in terms of powering the board on. Because to turn this thing on, what you do is this. You first of all turn on the, the mains power. I'll do this over here. Just turn that on over there. And you'll then see that... Uh, we have a little red light flickering down here, maybe you can see that. And once that's gone solid and happy, as it will in a second, now it is a solid and happy little blue light has flickered. To turn the thing on, you have to press the switch down here. This is a, a tiny, tiny little switch, as you can see. And you press and hold, and the fan might give a little flick. And yeah, there we are, and the thing is now booting up. And that's absolutely fine. Nothing wrong with booting like that. But there is actually a little connector here, down here. This is a switch connector where you can connect in a, a switch to uh, actually not have to push that switch there. And I've got a switch, as you can see. This is a switch, again, I found lying around. But unfortunately, if we look down at this connector, you'll see that the pitch is actually very small. So if I tried to put in these two connectors, that's not actually going to work. So uh, unfortunately, uh, I haven't been able to use this, uh, this switch. But that's a, that's a project for the future. But anyway, I just want to show you there are possibilities for changing around how you use the, the Latte Panda Alpha, and I've been experimenting with those this week. It's now Sunday the 13th of January 2019, and it's hence the last day of my Latte Panda Alpha week. And indeed, I've just been online using the Latte Panda to answer some of your YouTube comments as my latest Explained Computers video has uploaded. That was, of course, a Windows 7 video. I've been using Windows 10 all week on, on this single board computer. I get very confused with these videos where I'm going back and forth between different periods of time. Anyway, for me, it's the, uh, the 13th of January still. And uh, what have I learned about the Latte Panda Alpha across the past seven days? Well, I had a great respect for this board before I started. It's an expensive single board computer, but it's a very high quality single board computer. And across this week, I've, I think I had a bit of nervousness starting out doing some of the tasks on it, like particularly the video editing and compositing. Uh, I was sort of wondering, will it, will it cope? Will it get too hot or things like this? And then I just forgot about that and got on with the work. And this thing just kept up with me and kept working. It does get slightly warm, but this little fan keeps cu cutting in and everything has worked very, very well. And so I suppose by Final conclusion is that it is possible to do pretty much everything you do on a standard desktop PC on a single board computer like this one. And that is in January 2019. And so a few years from now, it should be possible for most people to do most of their computing if they want to on a board of this size. And that probably spends spells sort of the end of the, the large case for many people with computers. Having said that, in my next video, I'll be starting to build a PC in one of those large cases, my Ryzen build, that will stop next week. But uh, that is now it for uh, this video. So goodbye from me and the uh, Latte Panda Alpha. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.